everyone i am demon killer and in this video we are going to walk through how we can actually code in our phone running android operating system so first of all we are going to have to uh, we are going to download some applications from the google play store so the first one is going to be hackers keyboard and i'm going to install it just so that it makes our lives easier uh, in typing the code and after this we are going to install termux which is the android uh, terminal in which we are going to uh, write our code so we are going to download and install that as well and I think uh, the hackers keyboard is done so we'll just let uh, Termux download and install while we do some settings on the hacker keyboard hackers keyboard so I'm going to uh, go to the hackers keyboard and I'm going to set it as input method so first of all I have to enable the keyboard so you can do this by enabling it in your settings and once you're done you can set that as an input method and termux is almost done so now uh, if I go to a simple messenger to type a message I'll have hackers keyboard uh, you can see so now you can see it's activated so I'd like to do some settings in hackers keyboard before we begin so we're going to click on settings and I'm going to enable uh, the Firo compact layout US QWERTY keyboard so that uh, will include all the control and alternate keys for us so now we have Termux installed and we'll click on the application and we also have hackers keyboard set up for us so here uh, before we do anything it's really mandatory to uh, update and upgrade the system and I'll just show you, uh, I'll, right now I'll show you why is it mandatory to do so. So first of all I'm going to type in apt list and this uh, command uh, actually shows us all the applications we have. So right now it is showing us all the applications, all the uh, packages that are installed. But apt list actually shows us all the packages that are available. So this is why we need to uh, upgrade and uh, update and upgrade our systems so first of all I'm going to type in apt update and I'm going to click on enter we can do this with uh, as apt update and and apt upgrade but I'm going to do it in two separate steps just so that you can uh, understand what I'm doing so now I'm going to type in apt upgrade and it will ask like do you want to continue and I'm going to type in y for yes and press enter so it's going to basically upgrade my system. The thing about uh, Termux is that most of the things what you uh, uh, get in a desktop environment of a Linux terminal is not really available here. So we'll have to manually install it. Things like uh, text editors, things like uh, development tools. Uh, they are available in the package manager as packages, but they are not really installed. So you have to install them. So now that our system is updated, I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to, before I clear, uh, clear the screen and uh, install the stuff we need to uh, write out code, I'd like to show you, uh, uh, run the apt list uh, command again, so that you can see the difference. And now, as you can clearly see, we have uh, all the available packages visible, which otherwise were not. So this is why you should uh, update and upgrade your system every time you want to uh, install a new package on your device so I'm going to clear the screen and uh, I'm going to first of all uh, install a text editor so I'm going to install nano uh, you can install vim but uh, vim I think is not really uh, good for an instructional video so I'm going to uh, stick to nano and but if you're an advanced user you can obviously uh, go and uh, install vim the there is no actually uh, facility of gedit or kate here in an android environment you can however uh, use another application if that does but i'm not going to uh, exit the terminal so i'm going to install nano by uh, typing apt install install nano i'm going to uh, press enter and some 745 kb so now we have nano installed and now the next thing i want to do is check whether I have uh, the development tools like I said there are no development tools but still for the sake of showing you I'm going to test so let's start with C and C++ so I'm going to uh, search for the compiler 
which is GCC for C. So we are going to type in GCC version dash dash version. And as you can see, the program GCC is not installed, and we can install it by uh, installing CLang. Uh, and then I'll show you for G plus plus as well. So G plus plus, and then dash dash version. So as you can see, it also needs CLang to be installed. But I'm not going to actually install CLang. The reason it's it won't include a debugger. So I want to install the whole package. And for that, I'm going to type in apt install build and a dash sorry a dash and essential oh uh, really I have sorry I'm really sorry I had a spelling mistake here so I'm gonna press enter and over here I'm gonna press Y when it asks do you want to continue and it's about 259 MB of additional disk space but the reason uh, the, the advantage of installing build essential is that uh, you get everything like the compiler, the debugger, which you usually won't get in C -Lang, by installing CLang. So this really makes our lives easy. So we'll wait for this to install and I'll just speed this process a bit. Uh, we are done right now. So uh, first things first, I want to clear the screen. So now uh, I'm going to show you first of all where are we currently in which directory we are so we're going to type in pwd really sorry pwd and we are in the home directory so here when I press ls it's going to show me nothing because there's nothing in the home directory the home directory is empty so just for the sake of it uh, so that I have separate folders for each and every programming language that we are going to address here in this video so I'm going to uh, create a directory uh, for programming in C, PIC, and uh, where is this? And and CD PIC. Uh, so by the make there command, we are making a folder called PIC, and by CD. Okay, I'll just do it step by step so that it's easier for you. So we are making a directory called PIC, and when I ls, we have a direct directory called PIC, and I'm going to enter into this PIC directory and when i type ls again we do not have anything so here is where we want to make our uh, c file okay so i'm going to type in a, a, a hello world program execute it and run it to show you so that we save time and uh, we're going to do it by opening our text editor that we downloaded which is nano uh, if you're using vim go ahead and open vim and i'm going to name the file hello.c and we are in nano so we are running the latest version of nano which is 4.9.2 and I'm going to uh, create my hello world program so it's going to be hash include yes and we have it so we are going to save this by control O so you can press control here as well but I'm going to use the keyboard so control O and enter and exit this by control X and then it's the same uh, conventional way of compiling and uh, running the program as we do it in a desktop environment. So I'm just going to repeat the steps gcc hello.c. Before that, I want to show you, like I always do, that we have created a hello.c uh, directory here. So I'm going to compile this now by gcc hello.c uh, dash o and a binary file for running this executable. So as you can see, I have a fatal error. Oh my god, that was a typing error. Really sorry for that. Hello.c and I'm going to have to edit that. Stdio.h, right. Then I'm going to control O and control X and I'm going to compile this. And now it's compiled and to run it, it's the same convention. How do I, uh, yeah. Before this, again, I'd like to show you what has happened. So we have a hello binary and executable that we want to uh, run. So to run it, we have to type in dot slash and hello. And it will show you our hello world program. So I'm going to clear the screen. Get out of the PIC directory. 
and now we are in the home directory I'll show you that so we are in the home directory and we can create a folder for C++ and do the same things but right now I'm not really interested in that so I'm just going to show you what we can do with Python uh, I think Python is really what you would want to do in such sort of environment because the lines of code are less and really as a hacking uh, tool your phone can be great for writing Python scripts so let's search for Python 3 and you can see python 3 is not installed so we are going to install it by apt install python 3 so i think it doesn't support python as well python 3 as well so we are going to have to install python and i like to uh, tell you one thing that they are using the pk pkg package manager while i'm using the apt package manager because it's easier for uh, debian based uh, linux users or to you know uh, come on the android uh, platform so i'm using the apt package manager but you can use the pkg as well so i'm going to type apt install python and it's some 49 mb so i'm going to click wi-fi yes and wait for python to download and we almost have python installed so once it's installed, uh, I'd like to uh, do the same procedure, create a PIS folder, pro a PIP folder, programming in Python. We'll write in a hello world and I'll show you how to compile it and uh, run it of course. So now I'm going to go a bit quickly. Uh, the file directory video will be a different one, uh, mostly in the desktop environment. So I'm just going to clear the screen and make directories for Python files. So PIP and then I'm going to enter into this folder and then I'm going to create a file nano hello dot uh, the, the extension for python is dot py uh, press enter and I'm going to write in print hello world and I'm going to save it and to run it you just have to type python first I'll show you what has happened so we have a hello.py uh, file extension and we just need to interpret python so that's the beauty of running python in an android device so we'll just type python and hello.py and we should have our hello world program a hello world displayed so ladies and gentlemen friends this is how we uh, code basically in an android device on an android smartphone and we can similarly work on java swift uh, probably rust c sharp but uh that's for you to explore so really want to thank you so much for watching this video